Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over this great email that was sent from a subscriber. It's for a guy, he's 33 years old, and he shares his story how he went from being the guy in his late teens and 20s who thought the ultimate goal in the world was getting married, wonderful marriage, kids, all that, being that husband, to seeing reality of the times has become hardcore RP'd in the sense that while he still dates and hooks up, he ain't ever getting married knowing what he knows, and he will do relationships, but he, on his terms. And you're going to see in this story how he got to that point, <clears throat> his view on open relationships, all that. And when he finally had a gal that wanted a relationship with him, and she was a former friend of benefits, he does it, but on his terms, and never ever certainly allowing himself to fall in love with her. And you're going to see how eventually her ways come back, and she tries to pull one on him with regards to the open relationship thing, and let's just say it does not end well for her to the point that she is just shocked and appalled how our guy handles the situation. It's a great one. Really good here. There's some parts that you guys may be like thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? But just give some time, and you're going to see how this whole thing plays out. For you guys, I enjoy the videos where a guy gets in a relationship and the girl tries the open relationship crap and it completely backfires and blows up in her face. You'll enjoy this one. He says, hey, SSM. I love the channel and the stories that you share. I'm 33 years old, never married or engaged, and no kids, but I didn't always think the way I do right now. You can call me Mike. Early in life, from 17 through 24, I thought the goal was to find the right woman, settle down, and build a family. Yeah, and how well has that worked out for so many guys that thought the same thing? What the goal should be is a man is becoming the best you can be, your goals, your ambitions, not... And when I say goals, I mean achievements, not family. That's the problem nowadays. The women are now acting like guys with achievements, conquering the world, and the guys are acting like women, building the family and the, the connection with the girl and all that, and, and you see how screwed up the whole thing is. I watched a bunch of your videos that you posted on open marriages and relationships, and for the most part, I agree with your stance. Uh, first, I think it's important to, del to uh, mention the difference between the two and what I believe should be the reaction. Of course, I'm only speaking for myself and, mo and most of my friends. We've had long discussions about the topic, and while there are some minor differences in our thinking, I think we've come up with the tactics to battle this modern-day plague. Okay, fire away. If it's an open marriage, full stop. The marriage is over. Divorce and start rebuilding your life. There's no other acceptable response unless you enjoy being a victim. If it's a girlfriend, that's another animal altogether, but I'll explain in more detail. Fair enough. But in my opinion, she, if it's a girlfriend, which usually is leading to, obviously, something more for most people, and she's bringing up the open relationship, open marriage, it should be over regardless. Because it usually means one of two things. Either she's already cheating, or she has somebody in mind. And why would you want to be with someone like that? Unless, of course, you don't care. I guess I could just be an a-hole, but on the modern dating scene, it's the a-holes who are winning the game. Uh, newsflash, the a-holes always win the game. I talked to my dad, who's 64 years old, to get his opinions, and it's clear that he was raised under a completely different set of rules for dating that no longer apply. I'm sure there are going to be some guys out there that disagree with me, and I accept that. But when the rules of the game change, so do the tactics. He wanted to argue with me, but I reminded him that the internet wasn't really a thing when he was dating and met my mother. Exactly. Totally different playing field now. I spent a little time showing him some dating apps and he was flabbergasted at how his words looking like tramps the women are today. See, Dad? Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the issues that seems to be popping up more frequently over the last five years or so is the whole open relationship scam. We have enough data to show that when the topic is brought up, nine times out of ten, they're already cheating or know who they want to cheat with. Couple that with a modern phenomenon of no impulse control, female S-word empowerment, the divorce rates, and my favorite, the hookup culture, and the likelihood of a modern relationship lasting more than five years is slim, and for marriages, the magic number seems to always be between seven and ten year mark. Uh, that one isn't new. There, are, There's a reason there. That was the old expression, seven year itch. Yeah, and the reason that the, the marriages last even that long is because typically there's kids involved, and one party's giving the other one the benefit of the doubt and stretching it out for the kids and really hoping it'll get better when re in reality the relationship, the marriage, should have dissolved years before. I grew up in a traditional household and I liked 
And like I said, early in my life, adult life, I believe that the last logical step in adulthood was the wife, uh, two and a half kids, white picket fence, and growing old with your partner. In my late teens, into my early 20s, cleared out all that nonsense out of my mind after a slew of failed relationships. There were various reasons, but the one that seemed to happen more times than not was the party girl behavior and cheating. Thankfully, I've never degraded myself to begging, but it did make my skin a lot thicker when it came to dating. Yeah, those years were, will harden you, my man. By the time I was 25 years old, most of my friends that were in long-term relationships had broken up, and in most cases, it was from infidelity. See? Out of my six closest friends at the time, the infidelity came from the guy once that I'm aware of, and soon the rest of our friend group found out. We kicked that guy to the curb. Dirtbags are dirtbags regardless of gender. <clears throat> that was around the time that I started noticing more stories about open relationships, and we all paid attention. Of my friends I mentioned, three out of six of them were single, single parents by 25 years old, and those of us without kids paid attention to how they were dragged through the court system. So, right here, I want to point this out. He said that three of his, of, of his half his buddies, his core group, were single parents by age 25. Now, here's a question. Why the fuck were your friends clearly getting married or having kids that early on? Because I guess they were subscribed to the same thing you said you once did. Well, the ultimate goal is a wife and kids and the white picket fence. That's stupid. And I also might add that... Uh, I've said this a lot of times, the maturity level of the so-called, of the young adults is not nearly what it was back in the day. Now, sure, there are, of course, exceptions, but the maturity level of your typical high school graduate now at 18 years old is night and day difference compared to when I was the same thing almost 30 years ago, night and fucking day. And the same thing with the early 20s in comparison to back then. Now, there's always somebody that says, my grandpa got married at 19, or my dad got married at 19, and they live happily ever after. That's great. But it was also a different time period where people were raised to be, take more responsibility. Nowadays, so, I'm sorry for your friends, but they were nuts to be getting hitched that soon, that early, at an early age. You should never do I would Nowadays, if you're going to get married, you got to get to know her very well, minimum five years and you got to live with her as the final test and even then she can hide who she is and i wouldn't consider an engagement until your late 20s when you made some money established yourself in career matured more built your credit all those things if that's what you want to do i know i'm going off here but i gotta say this is a teaching channel so i gotta say that again and again and again uh, i'm sure they love their kids but their quality of life even when they don't have kids with them sucks ass I have two older brothers, one is divorced, and a younger sister, all of whom have kids, so my parents have their grandkids. Uh, being a father in this day and age isn't, isn't something I want to risk after watching what happened to my friends. For my 25th birthday, I got a vasectomy, and to this day, I have no regrets. Wow, dude, that was early. If you want to have kids, great. I hope you find the right woman. But I've yet to meet a woman that would make a decent wife, and certainly none that I would tie my figure to. Well, dude, at 33 years old, your age, and given the environment that we're in right now, I, I agree with you. I agree with you what you've observed and experienced. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Are there exceptions? Yes, but sadly, they're becoming more and more rare each day. There are some good gals out there of the traditional background and view on life. There are, they're out there, but the numbers are dwindling. And I got people that disagree with me all the time on that, but I stand by my, my, my point on that. So who can blame guys? That they want to get married anymore or let, even do relationships given the environment that we see right now. It's a losing uh, situation for the guys. I know the general consensus is to drop the chicks if they bring up open relationships and for a while I did. Had it happened to me three times in a seven year span. You had three different chicks bring up the open relationship. You see the damage that this bullshit they peddle on the various Cosmopolitan is a big one, as well as other things and these stories popping up. The damage there. I dropped them all and moved on, but I noticed that my situation wasn't really unique. It, seems more, it seemed like more of a trend, and that trend was increase, increasing in frequency. I guess it could have been a, an area that I live in. I'm not sure if it's happening this often in middle America, but I live where, where I live, so the rules of engagement are for my little place in the world. I live in a large city in the Northeast, and the hook of culture here is strong. Okay, let's narrow this down. The Northeast. 
and a large city in the Northeast. Boston, that wouldn't surprise me given the fact that I lived near Boston for 13 years. Providence, that's a small, I mean, Boston's in comparison to New York City is smaller, but still a big city. Probably New York City you're probably talking about. That, that's a very likely one. Philadelphia, who knows? I mean, my family's from Pennsylvania, but Philadelphia really is imploding. I wouldn't even go in there anymore. No offense to the, the Philly guys here. Um, what else? I can't think very much right now, but those are the, the bigger ones. Philly, New York City, Boston, Providence. I know I'm leaving some out, but it's early. I used to love the chase and the dating and the building a relationship, but found over time and pain that those rules no longer apply. Guys are problem solvers. I wasn't prepared to, to become a monk or fly, fly to another country to be, find a traditional gal. So I had to play the cards I was being dealt with. When the rules change, you have to change your tactics to adapt to the new rules or you're going to lose. So that's precisely what my friends and I did. Uh, there were some bumps along the way, but I think we figured out how to combat the open relationship paradigm. At least it works for us. Let me clarify my core beliefs. First, I'm not getting married. It's just too much a risk for little to, to no benefit. Second, I'm not interested in having kids. If those are the things a person wants in their lives, our strategy is useless to them. Dude, it's your life. If you want to get married don't have kids, then fine. So, I mean, you can't have kids anymore. But um, you could all, I mean, the situation changes, you could always adopt and I'm and I and, and take other measures, but still. It's your life, my brother. You can do whatever you want. End of story. Uh, there was a video you shared a few months ago about a guy who pretended to be in an open relationship with his girl that cheated on him, and that was my inspiration to send you my own story. Well, that and paying attention to the whole women in my orbit. At around, at, a race, at, a, at around the age of 28 or 29, I noticed a lot of the gals that were the party gals and just out for fun started throttling back their clubbing and trying to reinvent themselves into traditional women. All of a sudden, the hookups were being traded for the stable relationship. That's because they were in their late 20s, and at that point then, they wanted a ring on their finger. That's what happens. I've said this countless times. The number of women are terrified of is 30 because they know at that point then their their market value in, in the physical department drops significantly, like buying a brand new car and driving it off the lot and it's going to drop down in value. They know it. And also the competition thing with other girls. But they put that ring on their finger and, and a lot of these charming lasses eventually go back to doing the same crap they did before. It's really unfortunate. It says a few of the ladies I knew initially and can attest to being some of the biggest freaks you've ever met, are now trying to behave like they were good girls that had never been a tag team in the club bathroom. And a few of them actually found a sucker to buy their used, their used assets like they were getting the, some prize. Of course. I wish them well, but I'm not sure how those ladies can keep up the act. They're not going to keep up the act. They'll keep up the act since they got that ring on their finger, they say I do, and they're going to go back to their old way. A leopard doesn't change the spots, especially when the environment encourages the lepers to continue on with the way their spots are. are. That, that, that That's stupid. I shouldn't have said that. But anyhow, <laughs> you get the point. Uh, over the years, I've adopted some basic rules for dating. I don't mind hookups, but I also don't mind a monogamous relationship. I look at relationships like a duel and I let the women choose the weapons and rules we are going to play by. There are five basic levels in my mind for relationships. Hookups, one-night stands, friends of benefits, monogamy, long-term monogamy, and marriage. I'll never get married, but the rest are possible for the right woman. The biggest problem I see with guys is they have a scarcity mindset and take the first woman to give them any attention, which usually ends in a twisted metal, uh, metal and pain. Yeah, that's exactly it. The scarcity mindset. Their whole lives they weren't getting any, and finally some pretty girl gives them a little bit of attention probably because that girl is now trying to cat, retiring temporarily from her carousel riding because she wants a ring, sees a guy that's already done well for himself at a young age or he's on the way to doing well, a good long-term investment, and she starts paying attention to him and you guys get the rest. That's what happens to these guys. And they're thinking, oh my God, finally a girl's paying attention to me. I'm finally going to get laid. All the movies were right. I found the girl. No, you didn't. You just found a gold digger. It's, it's so unfortunate that it, I have to say that, but this the, what has been demonstrated countless times is proven to be true. 
Uh, he says, never stop improving yourself. The more you become, a, the more you become as a man, the more options you get. If a guy tells me that he can't even find a hookup, I know it's because he's not working on himself enough. Women can smell and sense confidence and success. Men don't have to like the new rules of the game, but if they want to play, they must adapt or die. Men only have two real choices, be a shark or be a guppy. It's a cruel world and nobody gives a damn about the guppy. But everyone fears and respects a shark. Don't be a guppy. Exactly, but here's the deal. By and large, most guys can't be sharks. And when, I, when you say shark, that you, doesn't mean you have to be an asshole. I'm going to make that clear. You can find the balance. You can be a good man. You can be a kind guy, uh, kind and, and generous and all these good things. But you don't tolerate any bullshit, you know, and you, you are well aware of reality. And that's what I want you guys. I want you guys to be fucking asshole, Chad and Tyrone types or scumbags. But you can be a good guy that would give your shirt for a good friend. But if that same friend crossed you, you'd be then become a shark. Uh, now, now, before everyone starts giving me crap for being a Chad or Tyrone and being part of the problem, I'm a good man. I treat everyone I'm in contact with with respect that they've earned. Okay, good. Therefore, you're not Chad or Tyrone. I don't pump and dump unless that's what the woman I'm with wants, and I'm clear from the outset. That's a mutual exchange. I don't leave women on, and I never make promises that I don't intend to keep. I know my value, and, and so do the women I interact with. Only a chump or a coward has to lie in these modern women. He says, okay, enough of my soapbox. But in the modern dating scene, it's imperative for men to know their own value and have self-respect. Yes. The common theme with all these stories I do with these guys are in these train wreck relationships and they have their hearts stomped on and all these awful things happen is they have no self-respect. They the women don't respect them because these guys are pushovers. They, they have no balls. They don't stand up for themselves, don't draw boundaries. You have self-respect, guys, and you and you command respect from others, you're not gonna have a problem. No, no long-term problems. I was 31 years old when I met Marcy, who was 28. It was after many, many lockdowns in my area. We were starting to get lifted, and I was bouncing off the walls to get out and have some fun. At that time, I had made, I had some female friends that I had spent time with, but it was mutual on both sides that we were only having fun and nothing serious. Over the years, a couple of them found themselves in serious relationships, but still made contact with me as friends. Of course they did. And you know what? You should they were, they were if you're fooling around with them. Uh, you should have told those guys. But then again, if if you're quote unquote friends with these girls, which doesn't mean friends, it means friends with benefits. If you if you're telling me that you are hooking up with women who have boyfriends and knowingly do so, that does make you a chair terror and a scumbag. So I really hope that's not what you meant there. And certainly those guys deserve to know. <clears throat> I never did anything with women that were in committed relationships because I find cheers to be the highest form of scum. Okay. I just Good. I'm glad you clarified that. I never reached out to any of them, but they always sent me periodic texts or phone calls trying to keep in touch. Yeah, they're keeping their options open. That's what. And they're testing the waters to see if they can hook up with you. You should have told their boyfriends. The hell, if they got mad at you, so what? You know, we, we got guys got to stick together. He says, guys, women always keep their options open. Even if they're in committed relationships. It's one of the reasons I never take these gals seriously. Most of them, I have one foot out the door no matter how great their guy is. I know I sound pessimistic, but the truth is the truth, even if you disagree with it. Brother, I agree with you 100%. And I don't think there's pretty much anybody that regularly watches this that's going to disagree with that. That's the, that's how things are. And guys got to be the same way. Uh, back to Marcy. She was a lot of fun to be with. And while we started off as friends of benefits... She started to provide some value to my life after spending time together for about four months. She asked me if we could be monogamous and try a relationship. With her friends with benefits, I wouldn't. I told her from the start that I didn't mind, but if she was interested in marriage at some point, it would be best if she moved on because there was no situation that I would entertain getting married to anyone. <clears throat> Good, you made that abundantly clear from the get-go. We all heard it. She said she was fine with that, and she didn't need the government telling her who she was in love with. Bullshit. When women say fine, they ain't fine. That's bullshit. She's hoping she can change your mind. Because when all her friends start getting rings on their fingers and get a ceremony, that's when she's going to start whining. And remember, I guarantee you, she's going to be the foot out the door, like you said. The problem is, is that you go fall in love with a girl you became friends with benefits with, that then then all everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket. <clears throat> So I wouldn't have gotten a relationship with her. 
It takes a lot of time and resources to keep up with her rotation, and I was having fun with her, not just in the bedroom, you heathens. So I told her my boundaries for a committed relationship. <laughs> with the friends with benefits with that type, yeah, good luck, my friend. I gotta say it, we're all thinking it. <clears throat> there were five of them. Number one, she had to drop all the men in her social media if she wanted to be in a exclusive relationship with me. Number two, she had to put all of her social media to private so that the for sale sign was taken down. Number three, if she had any male friends, they were gone, blocked and quickly out of the picture. Number four, no more girls' nights out with her single friends. And five, if I asked to see her phone and she refused for any reason, she was out the door, no questions asked. There you go, my man. You have all the power because she wanted the relationship. The men had the keys to the relationship. Okay, here are my terms. If you don't like him, okay, that's fine. You can go with somebody else. We'll, you know, end of story. <clears throat> she agreed to everything. And she asked the same of me. I've always been honest with the women in my life, including my friends with benefits, and agree. Okay, let's see how long this lasts. I know I'm going to get some hate for what, what I'm about to say. And uh, more than likely, some name-calling, but I don't care. Women want a leader, not an equal. Dude, I 100% agree with that. Being a leader means they'll follow your lead. Leaders don't compromise with their subordinates. Yes, I said the woman in your life is your subordinate. Women want a man that is superior to them in nearly every category, while demanding equality. I can already hear the shouts from around the world, but it's impossible to lead by committee. Dude, I totally agree with that. I've covered a lot of stories, more on They Did What channel, about these guys that they get married and their wife suddenly gets a major raise and she's making way more than him or they start off that way. And what typically happens is that's when all the bullshit starts. She starts treating him like crap, losing respect for him, all that. Or say she keeps the job and he's a stay-at-home dad. And what's really going on here is that she's losing respect for him because he's no longer being the leader, the provider. She's the provider. She's the leader, you know? And yeah, you could have a stay-at-home dad that can be be strong and be a leader, but still, she's the provider, and it doesn't work. It's unfortunate, and that's what all, that's what the narrative says. She can make more money than the guy, or be the sole provider. Yeah, that dynamic has shown it doesn't work by and large. And if people say it does work. Well, there's probably some underlying resentment and issues that are ready to erupt. Yes, they want a leader. They want that guy that can say they got a prize. That's why women always want the guy that makes more money than them, higher status than them, all these things, because they got the prize, and that way they'll let them lead. And now, not all women want a guy that's going to lead or follow, and those are usually the masculine ones, the effinist, okay? No effinist gal is ever going to go along with that, but a feminine one will. <clears throat> either be a man and lead or compromise and women will lose respect for you and move on even when they say they want a partner. They want a man that can make decisions and make their lives easier. They settle for the, the beta simps that eventually get replaced by Chad and Tyrone's. Men and women are equals as far as dignity and human rights go, but in a relationship, women want a man, not a simp. Yes. Do you know how many gals I've talked to because I'm acquainted with a lot of gals? You know, I, I have friends that have... We have barbecues and parties, and you know, particularly when I was living in Massachusetts, and I become acquainted with these gals, friends of friends, <clears throat> these single gals in their 30s and some in their 40s, some that are never married, some that have been married and are single again. And they always say there's no men out there, and what they mean by that is not in terms of like uh, jobs and stuff like that, but just these guys are spineless. They don't lead. They don't take charge. They kiss their ass. They act, they're, they're pushovers. They're nice guys. That's what they're talking about, you know? And I just sit there and smile with a grin on my face, and, and I know exactly what the fuck they're talking about, you know? And yet these same gals will then bitch if the guy's laying down the law. So there's, there's no making them happy. But, yes, they want the guy that's the, the feminine ones want the leaders. <clears throat> the relationship's going to last. The women need to be ch uh, chasing the validation from her man, or she's going to be chasing it from another man. The second you put her on the pedestal is the second she's looking for your replacement. I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, and a lot of people are probably calling me a sexist or misogynist, but life is sexist, as is human nature. Society constructs don't erase 100,000 years of human development. Yeah, well, we're in a period now where a lot of people are trying to deconstruct human history, and they, they don't like how things are, therefore... They want to change. They, they want to change the past. They want to change history. They want to change how human beings operate. It doesn't work that way. Look at the mess we're in right now when they're trying to reverse the roles. That the women behave like men, the men behave like women. You all know what I'm talking about here. 
<clears throat> for just uh, over two years, the relationship with Marcy was going along fine, and she didn't break any of my boundaries, even though most of her friends were constantly trying to get her to go, go out and party with her. I'm sure her friends hated your guts. She asked me a couple times if I minded if she went out with her friends, and I told her that if that's what she wanted to do, to have fun and be safe, but our relationship would be over. Oh, I'm sure her friends are hating you. Now, what's to say that she isn't doing stuff behind the scenes anyway? She wanted to argue, but I shut down and told her it was non-negotiable if she wanted to be with me in a committed relationship. See, you hold all the cards because she's the one that wanted the relationship, not you. She came to you. And you could take her or leave her. That's the point. I did a video last night about uh, a guy who went on a weekend fishing trip, trip with his grandpa and father who had just gotten through a bad breakup. And they were giving him some old school advice. And the grandpa told him pretty much never be in love with your girl. You can love her, but don't be in love with her because otherwise you're going to make dumbass decisions. And yeah, you can care about her, but if you fall in love with her, you're never going to be able to walk away from her or lay down the law. And a guy has to always be ready to walk if the terms aren't work what he wants, period. And if you haven't watched that video, check it out. It's really entertaining. He says, guys, the streets are always calling. If you don't have enough self-respect to stand by your convictions, you get no sympathy when you find out she's back on the carousel. She never went out, she never went out with her friends to the clubs. I, don't, I didn't force her or tie her to a chair. That was her choice. You cannot draw a line in the sand and move it when things get uncomfortable. I never told her what she couldn't do. I told her what I would be willing to do, what I wouldn't accept, and that she was free to do whatever she wanted to do. I never believe in the idea that it's my responsibility to think for another adult. But it's completely my choice to determine what I'll accept in my life. Yes. It's like, okay, you can do whatever you want. I can't stop you. But here's what I'm going to do. I can't force you to not be in social media or not be out with your friends. But what I can do is say the relationship's over with and I'm walking. There you go. Now, before anyone starts claiming I'm abusive, manipulative, or an a-hole in general, I gave her the world. In the two years we were together, I took her on five vacations. One was a cruise and one of them being a trip to Europe to see the sights in Italy, and it was a great time. I got a problem with that dude as long as it's what you wanted to do. You want to go on a cruise? Cool. You want on a cruise? She's coming along for the ride. You want to go to Europe? Fine. Come along for the ride. You're having a good time together, you know? On the other hand, if you were going to fucking Celine Dion concerts or something like that and paying for that and you didn't want to do that, you're doing it for her, then I got a problem with that. We started in Rome and visited the most historical sites from Pompeii to the Vatican. Fantastic, by the way. Dude, I was there almost 20 years ago. I loved it. I wish I had a lot more money back then. I paid for everything, and I don't regret it because it was a wonderful vacation with a woman I loved. In our lives, at home, living separately. I took her on dates a minimum of twice a month and, that, and was there for her. Now, when you say you loved her, loved her or in love with her? Because I, I think you were you loved her. In, in a sense, but you weren't in love with her. Because guys that are really in love, very hard a hard time laying down the law or having a dynamic like you described. So I think you love to be in love with her. We've been an item for a little more than two years when the topic of open relationship came up. <laughs> of course, this is what happens when you, when you sit, get in a relationship with a friend with benefits, which I would never do. Did she, did she really think the guy who said, okay, we'll be in a relationship with no social media, no girls' nights, this, would do an open relationship, that you go for an open relationship? No. She's rebelling. She wants out. Hopefully keep you around when she can find somebody better. She didn't directly ask me at first. Well, they usually don't. They drop hints. Initially, she was asking me what my opinion on the topic was, but that conversation doesn't come out of the blue. I told that if two people wanted to live like that, it didn't really matter to me. I wasn't opposed or for the idea. I'm guessing that even that my even keel stance on it was enough to give her the courage to ask me if I wanted to try and see if it could make our relationship more fulfilling. Did she really say that to make your relationship more fulfilling? Bullshit. And again, if you had two people that started out in an open relation, alter, alternative lifestyle, if you will, and they're both consulting adults and there's no kid in the picture, knock yourselves out. But if you're trying to, if your relationship was not formed on that basis, and now someone wants to do that, good fucking luck. It's never going to work. I could tell she was nervous when she asked and was completely surprised when I shrugged off and told her, sure, it sounds fun. 
I'm fairly certain that she was expecting anger or arguments from me, but when I agreed and seemed fine with the idea, she didn't know how to respond initially. Now, give, give this guy a moment to do go through his story here. Now, before people start cursing my name and sticking voodoo dolls in pins, let me explain my reaction. Okay. I mentioned before that I see different levels in relationships. What she did by asking me for an open relationship was to demote herself to girlfriend material back to friends with benefits. Correct. She's no longer your girlfriend anymore. She no longer gets the benefits. That's why I knew you were going with this. It didn't really matter to me one way or another. All the benefits of being committed to a relationship were gone. If she just wanted me for wanted me to use it for SEX, I was fine with that. There you go. Now, here's the point, dude. You were obviously never in love with her. Because if you were in love with her, you would have be, been behaving much different. And you would have been heartbroken and all that. But no. So, when you said you loved her, I think you were like, yeah, I love her. You know, you weren't in love with her. And on that basis, you demoted her to Friends of Benefits and the story. Back to what how you started. And there you go. So, lesson, guys. Don't try to turn... You can't turn an HOE into a housewife. What she did not expect was all the benefits of being a girlfriend were gone. To me, she was nothing more than a hookup at that stage. Correct. She wanted to talk about the rules we would follow. Of course, she wants to bring up the rules. Get newsflash, my friend. She's been breaking the rules the whole time, and I completely stand by that. But I told her that we didn't need any rules because if any of them were broken, I would cut her out of my life completely. It'd be like we never met at all. She got a nervous look in her face and tried to backtrack. But I told her that I wasn't stupid and she wasn't sleeping with someone already. She knew who she wanted to sleep with. Exactly. She tried to deny it, but I told her it didn't matter to me one way or another. And the fact that she even asked me, told me that she didn't respect me. She doesn't respect you. She spent the next hour telling me how much she loved me, and after listening patiently, I told her it was fine. I wasn't angry. I was actually glad that she brought up so early in the relationship, and I told her to be to have fun and be safe. We did talk about using protection to avoid STDs, but beyond that, I told her she was free to do whatever she wanted with whoever she wanted, because that would be it would it would be the end of the that would be the end of the discussion. So when I say all the time that when a woman brings this up to a guy. And says, and she tries to sell the guy in the open relationship, open marriage thing. That, oh, you can go hook up with all these girls. She doesn't love you. She doesn't care about you. She can care less. Just like here. And he's like, you can go do whatever you want. Because he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't love her. Or in love with her. I think he enjoyed her company and had fun with her. And liked her, but could take her or leave her. And that is how guys, unfortunately, have to be. Otherwise, well, you all know. She was just another girl in the rotation now and not anyone I would take seriously. Over the next four months, we went out and did our own thing. To me, she was nothing more than a hookup and I was fine with that, but no chance of getting her pregnant. The odds of an STI were the same as with one of my one-night stands. I always used protection and within a week of that, I had most of my former rotation back in the mix. I'm not sure what she expected to happen, but the time she wasn't busy and wanted me to entertain her, I was usually busy with someone else. Exactly. You didn't demote her. She demoted herself. She doesn't get the girlfriend privileges. And she certainly is not getting trips to Rome. On the few times we did get to spend time together, she noticed immediately the change in our relationship. Where we had been each other's only when she came over, one of the first things she noticed was that I no longer gave her parts of our intimacy that I was I did when we were monogamous. I no longer gave her kisses and under no circumstances did I ever go down on her again. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. I also never bothered with dates or anything that would give her an indication that I cared about her for more than SCX. To me, she was just another body and no one I would ever spend any resources on. Amen. Exactly. Now, I'm sure to stay in your good graces, she was going to be more than willing to go down on you and do all sorts of things you wanted. But nope, you're not making the extra effort. You shouldn't. It was after our third hookup after the open relationship started that she asked me why I was being so cold to her. I just laughed and told her that I would never kiss or kiss her or go down there on her again because I had no idea who or what she was in her mouth or her nether regions. For me, she was nothing but a walking, talking fleshlight. <laughs> she started crying, of course, saying that we were in a relationship. And I laughed some more and told her that we were used to be in a relationship, but now that she was public property, all she was to be was another 304 that could find that could find at the club. I knew she had been out there hooking up with other men, and she knew that I had my rotation back. They all love drama. 
Drama, drama, drama. You know, you were you were monogamous with her, and who knows how long she may have been monogamous with you, but and I'm sure that her friends are whispering in her well not whispering, probably yelling at her, how can you be with that guy? And she probably actually thought that you would treat her the same once you brought that up. How stupid is that? But I told you they always test. And she may have interpreted your vacations that you paid for that you wanted to go on anyway and things like that. It's like, oh, I got this guy. I'm wearing him down. And now I can bring up the open relationship. And now I can go back on social media. She was wrong. It was then that she realized she was no longer in the girlfriend category and that she freaked out and wanted to close our, our relationship to go back to where we were. Fat chance, honey. But I told her I would never see her as anything but a common WHRE and would treat her accordingly. Whew. She ended up running out of the apartment after that, and I'm not sure she expected me to call or to chase her, but it didn't happen. I just went on my life, and she made her choice, and I made mine. There you go. And again, you weren't in love with her. Hell, I don't even think you loved her. I think you liked her a lot, but that was that. Funny enough, she did contact me about five months down the road, apologizing for messing up our, our relationship and asking if I would give her a second chance. I was honest. I told her we could be friends with benefits, but she would never be a person I would ever take seriously again. That was several months ago, and she comes by a few months, a few, a few times a month, to get her insides rearranged, knowing that I will never be more than what it, what, what it was. No, she's coming back because she hopes in time she can change your mind. That's what she's trying to do. If she is convinced that she's never going to get you to change your mind, you never hear from her again. It says, guys, these women are insane, and, they're, and, and the second they're faced with rejection, they lose their damn minds. So in summary, if your girl wants an open relationship and you're not married, go for it, but make her re re the decision every day for the rest of her life. As she's asking, she's never going to expect you to go full pit mode on her, stop all the relationship affection, and just go out and live your life. Until these 304 start to feel some consequences, men are always going to be at disadvantage in a relationship. Just stop it, guys. You are the prize. Act like it. Amen. Exactly. So it's like, in the beginning, is like, well, I can have a different opinion on open relationships. No, you don't. You never get, you never, you certainly didn't love her because no guy that loved their girl would be able to switch it off like that. He can, he can like her a lot and, and degrees of love, but in love, no freaking way. So there you go. Immediately, she demoted herself, let's be honest, to friendship benefits. And believe me, you just treat her like one of these carousel riders. End of story. So, guys. What do we learn here? Again, open relationship, open marriage. They already have somebody else in mind or they're already cheating. And in my opinion, even if uh, she brings it up and you just like her but don't really, you don't love her, I'd dump her anyway. You had your fun with her and I get that and you got a good story to tell, but I just would, <laughs> I'd end it right then and there. They always test the boundaries. He laid all the boundaries in the beginning, all the conditions. Who knows? She really kept up, kept true to them, but regardless, she went along with it because the relationship was her idea. He had the power. He held the keys in the relationship. But eventually, you can't turn an HOA into a housewife, and she wants to do the open relationship thing. Because probably in her view, <clears throat> she interpreted, she saw weakness, whether you real thought that or not. The vacations or who knows what. And she thought she could test the boundaries, and it backfired big time. So good for you for handling that well. And, uh, and I'd like to hear an update down the road if she's still bugging you. So there you go, guys. That's how you have to handle things. And, and again, if you haven't done so already, check the video I published last night. about the. You'll see a picture of a father and grandfather and a son go, a grandson going fishing. You'll really enjoy that. I didn't put a title on that. That was all you know, outlandish or anything like that. So it's not doing as many views, but it involves some of these things that are in this story here. You guys will definitely like it. Check it out. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.